hello and welcome to a little bit of a different video today. So, a lot of people have been asking and a lot of people do wonder how to use ground forces and basic ground forces tips, that kind of thing. And I've kind of realised that it's hard for me to make videos that are really comprehensive in decent enough time. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating a new series and it's going to be the first, first video in it. It's just going to be me random collections of tutorials where I spend uh, maybe 5 to 25 minutes on rambling essentially. Well not rambling but going over a specific thing uh, and kind of explaining it and giving my rationale. Um, there's not going to be super high editing, there's not going to be super high any of that, it's just going to be me talking about stuff. So, why am I starting with ground forces first? Well, it's, as I said earlier, people generally have the biggest confusion with ground forces, they generally have the hardest time understanding ground forces, and it's generally the most daunting thing to get into. So, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of explain what you want to be thinking about in this episode, in this video, what you want to be thinking about when you're designing a ground force, when you're designing your hierarchy, um, the, the, the benefits, the negatives to certain unit types, vehicles, class design, all of that stuff. So where do we start off? Well, the first thing we start off is, is the unit class design. Now, when you are in the unit class design window, you're presented with uh, these windows. So on the top left, you have the element type or the base unit type as seen here. You have the armor type for that base unit. Then you have the capabilities you can provide on, and those provide certain bonuses in different combat climates, and you can apply those accordingly. You then have the component type you can add to the element type. And all of these combined allow you to then create a unit which comes up here, change its name, and there you go, you have an element. So what do you want to do with your ground forces? Why do you want to design your ground forces? Well, there's a few reasons. First. Uh, providing suppression and what I mean by that is you're keeping on the ruler colonists because once a uh, population goes above 10 million they're going to start demanding power protection value and if you don't have that you can use ground forces to suppress the effects of not having it so that doesn't cure the PPV issues as, as ground forces don't provide that however um, they are beneficial and that they can suppress it and are quite cheap in doing so. You don't need ships, you don't need maintenance facilities, ground forces can be completely supported on their own very, very usefully. The second reason, you actually want to fight something. Uh, if you want to take a world without blowing in smithereens, you're going to need ground forces. If you want to garrison the world, you're going to need ground forces. If you want to, um, you know, hold territories or defend against orbital bombardment, you're going to need ground forces. That is the other reason. The third reason is going to be geological uh, and xenological survey using the components provided, which um, you can see obviously here. Construction component, geosurvey component, and then there's also the, geo uh, the xenological survey, which I don't have here right now, but uh, is another component. And those allow you to study ruins, dig them up, and all that good stuff. And the construction equipment allows you to do some uh, other fun things, but mainly dig things up, which is what you want to do. Geosurvey obviously allowing you to... Uh, get new accessibility all of that. So let's walk you through the base unit types. To start with, we have the infantry. Uh, infantry is um, the basic unit that you're probably going to build first. Uh, it is the cheapest. It has the least health, the least base armor. It has a normal hit modification. So this is the hit points that it starts with. This is the slots it starts with. This is the hit mod, the max fortification, the self fortification. Now, keep in mind, these hit points are modified by your racial armor strength, okay? So, if you have a hit point of 1, think of that as a 1x multiplier, okay? So, for a light vehicle, that's 3x. So, 3 times 4, there's 12. In this case, it's 1 times 4, so we have 4 HP, as you can see here. Slots indicate how many of these things you can put in. So, like personal weapons, personal weapons, all these kind of different, different items. Hit modification is a flat debuff to the chance for an enemy to hit you uh, when they roll for hit chance. This is very powerful, very useful indeed. Max fortification is the fortification that you will be provided with uh, when you fortify with construction equipment, which we talked about earlier, which was in medium vehicles, construction equipment. Max self fortification is the max fortification that the formation can achieve itself without construction equipment uh, forces helping it. These fortification levels essentially um, are dividing uh, uh, effectors on the calculation regarding hit chance. So 
what this means is if you have a high fortification level, you will uh, divide uh, the hit chance significantly to a point where you can almost be unhittable. And this makes fortification extremely powerful. This is also further modified by things like uh, temperate forests, by things like jungles. Uh, for example, on a mountain world, you get a 2x modifier to that. So what that means is you take that 6, you times it by 2, and then you divide hit chances by that 12 in this case. Um, there's more formula to that, but I'm not going to get directly into said formula. So let's bring back up the ground forces window here. Okay, so we kind of understood that. Now let's be on to the armor type. So once you've selected your infantryman, you got your infantryman right there. You're going to then uh, go over here and you're going to select either light infantry armor, pound infantry armor, or heavy pound infantry armor. You start with light infantry armor. You're going to need to research these two. And these are similar multipliers. So you see the racial uh, armor bonus uh, right here. Uh, you get that benefit. So essentially, pound infantry armor, you get 50% higher uh, armor. Heavy pound infantry armor, you get 100% higher armor. But these obviously correlate to increasing the cost. So this increases the cost by uh, 50%. This increases the cost by double. So it's directly linear based on the base armor rating. We then have boarding and all these other capabilities. Essentially what these will do is they will uh, provide certain benefits, certain bonuses to different combat situations. So let's, let's kind of go over a few of them. Boarding combat... Um, and, and also these are only infantry. Bowling combat basically means that you do not take, uh, you get a buff to when you're boarding a craft and you take less casualties on boarding that craft when trying to get, you know, try and landing troops on the craft. When you board a target, there is a chance, depending on the speed of the vessel in question, for you to lose um, elements attempting to board, essentially units or infantrymen. Uh, because of this, boarding combat specialize these troops and allows them to survive easier this doesn't mean that you can't board with non-boarding combat troops but it's extremely handy and i definitely recommend however that cost increase is significant 2.5x then we have desert warfare uh, desert warfare uh, allows uh, you to basically negate uh, not only negate but you get a benefit essentially you negate and get a benefit so you get about a 2x hit modifier for having Desert Warfare, assuming you're on Desert Warfare Planet. Now, all of these technically can stack together, and you can have two of them at any one point for a single element. So if you are fighting on an extreme pressure world, extreme pressure here being uh, a planet with more atmosphere than your species tolerance, and you combine that with Desert Warfare, and you're on that planet and there's both qualities, you get like a 4x hit modifier. Uh, you get a big, big bonus, and this makes capabilities extremely valuable, especially because hit chance is extremely low normally because of that fortification we talked about, because of that hit modifier we talked about, uh, because of um, just the general way that stuff's calculated. That is how it works. So extreme pressure, extreme temperature, the same kind of thing. Outside your species tolerance, you'll get those bonuses. Same with high gravity, and then all the terrains are the exact same, and same with low gravity as well. Some can be used by vehicles, some can't be used by vehicles. Really, really interesting. You don't need to be on any planet to train these. I would definitely recommend using them. They're very, very valuable, especially if you're going to be fighting on the jungle uh, planet. Uh, jungle mountain planets are the notoriously worst planet to attack and uh, will require the most amount of forces. Okay. Let's have a look at light vehicle. So light vehicle, we start off with a base size of 12. We have three hit points. That means we get a 3x multiplier to our racial... Uh, hit points which is based on our armor strength so we get uh, in this case if we have a look at a light vehicle uh we get a hit points of 12 uh, but our armor is actually lower and the reason our armor is lower is if we go over here we have light vehicle armor base ar racial ar so light vehicle armor we get a 2x mod okay uh and that means that we start with our armor of four and then we two times that so same thing with the infantry, we just uh, do it with vehicle armor. And light vehicles can only have light vehicle armor. But there are some benefits. So you may be asking, why would you do a light vehicle? Well, there are some benefits. First off, they're cheap. Second off, they're small. Third off, they have this hit modification. So this means that they will be 50% less likely to be hit uh, on the initial calculation when an enemy is trying to hit you, which is very, very important. Then we have the max vault and the max self. 
pretty self-explanatory. Basically, vehicles can't be fortified as much as infantry can, which makes infantry extremely good on the defense. Medium vehicles, essentially light vehicles with the same statistics as before, but they can have multiple slots. So we have two slots here, and those two slots will allow us to do various uh, things. We can have, you know, uh, heavy cat crew that served anti personnel and a big cannon, essentially. Heavy vehicles are also similar, static as well. So they have, these are all pretty similar to each other. They just have different hit mods. Um, light vehicles also have a hidden bonus to breakthrough. Breakthrough allows you to attack twice. So you may want to consider, hey, if I want a fast striking force that can achieve breakthroughs on a weakened enemy, light vehicles might be, might be what you want to do. Then we have static. Now, static has no breakthrough chance. Static is similar in cost to a light vehicle. Um, they have uh, the same fortification as infantry, but the same hit point situation as in, uh, as light vehicles. Um, and you can man them with larger weapons than you would say infantry. So let's get to those weapons. What are those weapons we're talking about? So if you have a look at infantrymen, you have a various different weapons, and you'll need to research some of these. These may not show up for you. You've got your personal weapons, and these are BVA with PWL, PW, PWI. And these have various stats. So what you're going to see here is size, armor piercing, damage, shots, and then the maintenance cost for that uh, component. In this case, we have an infantryman who's got light infantry armor and light personal weapons. This means, he's, means he costs very little, has very small armor, and very little damage. Uh, though, if we take away the jungle warfare, it's even cheaper. So, let's kind of understand what do these numbers mean. Right, so size is equal to tons, uh, and size is volume. Um, we're not getting to why it's volume much, but what I will say is tons. Think of these as transport tons, okay? So if you've got a 10,000 ton vessel, you need 10 that uh, you can fit 10,000 tons of light personal weapon infantrymen here, which are three tons each. So you can fit, you know, a hell of a lot. Um, you know, maybe 3,000 infantrymen. Uh, then we have cost. This is in Vrenderite, uh, which you can see here. You have to develop the infantryman, which you can see over here. This is like a normal research. Think of this as a component, really. You're designing a component, uh, which is what this infantryman is. You have the armor and hit points. Now, in this game, armor and hit points are not like you would think in other games. In other games, if you have hit points, you would imagine, okay, I'm going to take damage, like three damage, and I'm going to have one hit point remaining. In Aurora, that is not the case. In Aurora... If you have a weapon that's equal to their armor and equal to uh, their hit points in terms of the damage, so if you have equal AP and equal damage in regards to their armor and their hit points, you automatically go straight through them and kill them. There is no hit points, so to speak, as in you degrade them over time. You either kill or you do not kill. And the chance to kill or to penetrate the armor and penetrate the armor is based on your AP and your damage. For example... Personal weapons, in this case, 5-5, five, five, would automatically penetrate and then would automatically kill the target. These are two roles that are done exactly the same way. Um, as you see on screen, I'll, I'll do the calculations there. So, for example, you, the calculation would be, um, would be, we take 5, divide by 4, we then we'd square it. Um, and that's what we would get. And in this case, it would be equal 100% um, for the actual penetration uh, of the target. That's not actually what it would equal, but... For purposes of practicality, that's what it would. So whenever you're designing a force, you got to keep in mind that, you know, when we talk about soaking damage, we're not talking about soaking damage so much as, uh, you know, health or so much as that kind of stuff. We're talking about it more in regards to uh, you can lose infantrymen and not really be too concerned because they get just overkilled. They get shot. Um, and that's perfectly fine. So keep that in mind. That's what that means. Uh, annual maintenance cost, uh, that is going to be in uh, terms of uh, just uh, wealth. So that's how much wealth is. Um, you got So every ground force costs a certain amount of wealth to maintain. Uh, they are one of the only things in the game that actually needs wealth uh, to maintain them. And they can actually put you into bankruptcy. So be careful about that. Resupply cost is in GSP, as we can see over here with this number. Uh, this is essentially what you need to keep fighting so if you have a uh, a, uh, a corona or an, an element and each element has their own gsp they start with immediately three days or 80 hours of uh, gsp that they can fight with inherently once they run out of that they then need to be resupplied and this is the resupply cost 
if they do not have any supplies, which is what this is, then they fight um, at 20% the effect effectiveness of before. And what I mean by effectiveness, I mean hit chance. So 20% hit chance compared to 100% hit chance, then modified again by all the other modifiers, which makes it practically impossible to hit anything. So you want to make sure your units are supplied. So that's kind of what these numbers mean. Uh, let's move down to some of the other other things here. Um, so we have light anti-vehicle. Most of these are self explanatory. Most of these don't have any special rules. There are a few special rules we will go over though. Bombardment weapons. Bombardment weapons are weapons in which they can be fired from a different position. And we'll go over that position in a little bit. But essentially, you can have, there are four positions. Frontline defense, frontline attack, support, and rear echelon. Bombardment weapons can be fired from either frontline, support, or rear echelon. In the case of light bombardment, they can be fired from frontline uh, attack or defense, as well as support. And when you're in support, you have a less chance to be hit by the enemy forces. Um, in, in, in the easy way to say that. So you want light bombardment or you want bombardment weapons to be in separate formations behind your actual formations. Because otherwise, you're not really getting much effect out of this. Do not think of these as built-in mortars for your frontline formations. They are more like light howitzers. You want them behind your front line because otherwise you're losing the benefit of them and there are much more cost effective options for you. All right, then we have light anti air. Anti air is not really that important. Ground support fighters are not used by the AI and ground support fighters aren't that good. However, essentially, if this, if this AI value goes up, um, essentially you need to hit 20 damage to get one value, 40 damage, two value. Uh, you do one damage of one point of armor damage to the enemy fighter and that does actual ship damage, um, so to speak. Fortify direction. Uh, this is a component um, that you'll want to be using. This component is very, very useful because uh, you can have your uh, ships and your fighters support your ground forces more effectively. And what do I mean by that? For every fortified fire detection or fire direction you have in your uh, formations, you can have one ship or six fighters support that formation. And when supported, they have a far more effective time of doing things. And what I mean by that is it is about three times more effective in terms of the hit chance when compared to firing indiscriminately against enemy ground forces that they just detect in general. Um, you also want to be putting on the void combat for this element, headquarters, logistics, and surface orbit weapons. Avoid combat means that they basically do no damage, but they have no weapons anyway that can actually engage. Uh, but they have a far less chance to actually be hit. So that's what you want to do for that. Headquarters. Uh, Self-explanatory, except for you're going to need to bring this headquarters number up to here. So you can change this number, the green number. And this is uh, how you get capacity. To form a hierarchy, you need headquarters capacity that makes sense. We'll get into that in a little bit. But essentially, uh, headquarters allow you to add commanders that will provide bonuses to your formations. It will also allow you to have a hierarchy, which is very important. Um, and you want to have each of your formation work with that. Um, we'll, we'll, again, we'll get to that in a second once we go with formations a little bit. Uh, logistics modules. Uh, logistics modules provide 500 ground supply points, and then you have the small one, which is 100 supply points. I would not use inventory supply because they cannot provide their supply um, to formations below them, only formations within them. All right. Then in light, medium, heavy, and static, you're going to find essentially just different bigger versions of what we talked about. Uh, bigger versions of all these different weapons that have different capabilities, different statistics. And you want to be looking at these statistics when you're, ever, you're thinking about designing your ground forces, what you want to be building, that kind of thing. All right, let's go over to the order of battle here. So what I have for you today is I have uh, an army corps with infantry divisions and infantry regiments and infantry battalions. So I'm going to kind of talk through how I design my infantry forces. Now, obviously, um, I'm not the do-all, end-all of designing ground forces. There are going to be people who disagree with me how I do this, and it's up to you to design your ground forces in the most effective way you think it is possible. We have, right here, we have a very basic uh, situation with infantry battalions, infantry regiments, infantry divisions, army corps, and they all kind of divide into each other. So let's start with the basic. We have the infantry battalion. Now, this infantry battalion contains... 1,311 Trooper PIA PWI. So that means Power Infantry Armor, Personal Weapon Improved. So 
you can see the statistics for what they have here. They have six armor, they have four hit points, they have their pre-personal weapons, which gives them an extra penetration, but they are a little bit heavier. And they make up, you know, 80% uh, of, uh, or 80 to 90% of the formation. We then have Trooper PA uh, Light Anti-Vehicle, and those have the more heavy uh, Light Anti-Vehicle one-shot weapons uh, with high penetration, high damage used against vehicles. We then also have the HQ. Because this is the size of 10,000 tons, we're going to see the HQ with a capacity of 10,000 to manage the, the, the formation. Then we see GSP, we see HP, we see cost, size, fortification, that's they currently have, the morale, the supply, the units. Units indicate elements. Supply is how much you have in the formation. You start with uh, three days, remember. Morale, the lower or higher it goes, the higher hit chance you have. Uh, fortification regards max and uh, self, so the higher this goes, the better for you on the defense. Once you go frontline attack, this gets nullified. Size in tons. Cost in renderite, or, or, or cost in terms of minerals, so 304 BP essentially. The HP of all the units combined. Infantry tends to be higher HP wise. Because uh, you can fit more of them for a cheaper cost. And then GSP needed for an entire uh, combat round. So what this means is, is if we have 1, 2, 3, 4 battalions. And they have a GSP of 10,000 total. We are going to need approximately um, 100,000 GSP to fight for 30 days. But we can minus about you know, 20, 000, 15 to 20,000 of that. Because they already have 3 days of, of, of fighting within them. Um, and so... If we have a look at our actual HQ formation, and what I mean by HQ formation is the, H is the formation just above these, so the regiment, you can notice a few things. First, you can see the organization list completely. You can then see the formations that we are selecting, the formation unit list we are selecting, and then we can see the detachments. So we have the regiment, and then it's got four attachments here. And the regiment has a HQ, which has a HQ of 50. Its logistics are 78,000, 78, which you can see here on the formation attributes, so 78,000. And that's because we have 157 logistics vehicles. So what this means is that we have about 30 days of combat capability before we need extra resupply vehicles. And this is the basis I like to do for most of my formations. It was really easy. You get yourself five, you get yourself 10,000 ton formations. You slot them under an infantry regiment. You put logistics vehicles in, and then there you have your big baseline regiment. Uh, and they will be able to fight for 30 days on their own, wherever they are. Uh, really, really useful and usually what I go with. Um, and then once we go up, we go into the infantry division. The infantry division is just a HQ formation and that allows us to organize and have commanders assigned, which we haven't got here, assigned to all these different formations. And that's really, really useful. Again, HQs need to be able to encompass themselves and all the formations under them. So for the, um, for the division, there is four regiments of 50,000 tons each, so we need to have a HQ of 200,000 tons. In the infantry regiment, we have uh, 550,000 tons with four infantry battalions and then the regimental HQ, which means we need to have a HQ of 50. And then for the army corps, we need to have a HQ above 800,000, or in this case, a million tons, which works for us. A million tons in terms of capacity. And that's the general formation element for yourself. You can play around with this and get the general idea, but generally speaking, you want to be focusing on these um, blocks with resupply working for them. What I will be doing in the next video is going over uh, uh, resupply mechanics, things, uh, good practices, things you want to be doing to ensure you have good resupply, uh, and kind of, you know, you know, how do you replace forces, that kind of thing. Um, what I will go over before we end the video is going to be field for, uh, field positions. So in the game, you have four field positions. You have frontline defense, frontline attack, support, and rear echelon. Frontline defense is your basic one. Frontline defense allows you to attack frontline attack and allows you to attack frontline defense. It does not allow you to attack formations in support or rear echelon. Frontline defense also allows you to build fortification, uh, slowly. Uh, this is your standard, and this is generally what you'll use most of the time. You then have frontline attack. Frontline attack means you cannot be fortified, but you get a two times chance to break through a target. And because of that breakthrough chance, you get a chance to hit again, to use your weapons again, which is a big deal. Um, and that and breakthrough chance increases based on how many casualties you cause the enemy. You know, the, the more dead they are, the higher chance you actually get to break through their lines. The numbers advantage in your favor as well as the type of element. So if you're using a light vehicle, if you're using frontline attack, then those increase, those go up substantially. 
We then have support. Uh, support can build fortification. It has a weighting. So these guys have 100% weightings. And what I mean by a weighting is, is when a formation attempts to attack another formation, that it's able to attack, it, ha it will weight which formation it will attack. So it will view, it, it will attack whatever's got higher swinage easier. Uh, it's in an easier way. So if you've got 10,000 ton formation of uh, infantry battalion and they're on frontline defense, that'll be 100% weightings. If you've got them on support, that'll be 20%. So they'll only be viewed as about you know 2,000 tons. And they'll be viewed as less of a threat or less of a chance to actually uh, attack them. So this makes support harder to hit. Not only that, but if you're on the frontline defense, you cannot hit them at all. Uh, unless you have uh, bombardment weapons of some kind. Frontline attack, however, can hit all of them. Rear echelon is the same in this, and you can, but it's a 5% instead of a 20% weighting. The differences with support and rear echelon is that they can only attack uh, uh, properly. Um, rear echelon specifically can only attack if you've got bombardment weapons. Uh, and support, assuming it's not defending itself, and then support can... Um, support other formations uh formations can support other formations uh but it has difficulties actually hitting other places uh you want to keep your light bombardment weapons here you want to keep medium bombardment weapons here and then you want to move your heavy bombardment weapons to where we're actually on okay but you tools here by the way you can use um i'm gonna quickly just go over a few buttons and then we're going to end the video off i hope you guys have enjoyed by the way uh, i know this is very ranty and a lot of words and a lot of talking but it's better to get this video out than nothing so we have location, so where they are, you know, in the solar system or anywhere in your empire. Field position, which is the field position they have, so I can just show you this. So we're going to change these guys to frontline attack. And you can see the frontline attack right there. There we go. Civilian, civilians will have ground forces, you'll be able to show them. Amount pop-up, uh, we'll, we'll go over that in a second. Show ships, so if you have ships with uh, ground forces in them, you can see them. Show elements. You can see the element in a formation. And what you can do is you can click a mount pop up and you can click this and you can drag and drop these and you can move your elements around. Now, a mount pop up, you just move all of them in. But with a mount pop up on, you can actually specify. We then have show support, which is if a formation is supporting another formation. So in this case, you can see here infantry battalion, so that's just drag and drop. Infantry battalion FA is supporting infantry battalion 6th, uh, the 6th infantry battalion. Um, and you can show support like that. We can also see sort creation date, uh, which will sort them by their creation date. So that it's a little bit nicer to look at. All right. Uh, there's a lot more to go over. There's a lot more to think about. And there's a lot more to talk about with Ground Forces, which is insane to, to say. But I hope this video has helped you guys kind of get a grip on, you know, some of the Ground Forces ideas, some of the things you might want to do. Um, and in the next video, we'll be going over for more formation design. We'll go over ground replacements. We'll go over... Uh, things like uh, why would you take this over this? How do you assault a planet? Um, how do you assault a jungle world? How do you assault these these very fortified positions? What are the you know the best case use scenarios? What text do you need? That kind of thing. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Please like, comment, subscribe. Really does help me out. To the becoming a member, it really does help if you would support the channel. Um, allows me to make more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.